So without further ado, Mickey Fall. Hi, Mickey. Good morning, Dale. How are you? I'm doing well. Oh, good. We yeah. don't even get to see your mug, huh? Oh, well, I've got the video up. My, I'm looking at myself. Okay. So well, I'm not sure you, what I need to do. You're here. used to it. So it's not what you look like. It's uh, what's inside of your head. So uh, I'm, I'm pleased to have someone with the vast experience in the mining industry, precious metals, uh, non-ferrous metals industry. You've been at it for a while. Uh, let me ask you, Mickey, uh, why mercenary, Geo? Does that mean that if I paid you, you'd come look for oil in my backyard? Well, it kind of implies that, as you well know, Dale, a mercenary is someone for hire, not necessarily a soldier. But really, most geologists are mercenaries because we don't have real jobs. We go from contract to contract, and and so the idea of being a mercenary is has always been appealing to me. And and yes, if you pay me the right amount of money, I'll go just about anywhere in the world, assuming that the the idea and the project has merit. Okay, and uh, you knew right from the start in college this is what you wanted to do, this is what you studied? Well, not quite. I went to the University of Tulsa on a full petroleum engineering scholarship. Okay. After about two and a half years, I realized I didn't want to work on an on a offshore rig in the North Sea or sit behind a desk operating a calculator. I wanted to work outside, so... Always interested in rocks and geology was the obvious choice. And you've been all over the world. I see uh, Peru, Nevada, Chile, British Columbia. Uh, you're in Canada now. So a very opportune time to be talking about the mining industry, Mickey. And, you know, a lot of us uh, would like to get from an expert uh, ideas of where a lot of these mines or the general uh, production or extraction price of a lot of metals that are flirting with or underneath uh, what it costs to pull out of the ground. Uh, what's your view on, and I know it depends on the mine and mm -hmm. depends upon uh, a lot of factors what the production costs are, but with us trading around here a little over 1100, uh, are mines, a lot of mines that were not hedged for this decline in trouble? Well, most certainly, uh, I think the overall cost of production, and bear in mind, I'm not talking really about anything that the gold mining companies would report, and we are talking specifically about gold right now. Uh, we're underwater uh, at $1,200 gold. So, you know, we're when you uh, factor in the cost of capital, uh, sustaining capital, et cetera, which the uh, creative accounting allows most mining companies to kind of ignore that. Um, yeah, there, there are lots of gold mines are underwater. Lots of copper mines are underwater. At, yeah, at that's, a, that's even been, the base metals have even been worse. Well, they certainly have, and and uh, so mining itself it goes in boom and bust cycles. We had a boom from arguably 2003 to 2013. Uh, now we. We've had a correction. You know, it's all about supply demand fundamentals, and China, no doubt, is slowing down. Uh, so the market reacts to that, and generally, the market overreacts. The pendulum swings too far one way or the other. So, you know, right now, I think we are are approaching levels that are not sustainable for many mines in terms of prices received. So you'll see production come off. Uh, it will take a while for that to happen. But the cure for low prices is low prices and vice versa. So at some point, we'll have a correction. Um, you know, I'm not focused that much on gold right now as in the fact that when $700, it becomes a buying opportunity for me to buy physical gold, uh, which I tend to do uh, on dips. Uh, I bought some platinum bars recently. Uh, what I'm really focused right now is what I would call the energy metals, and I'm going to throw you a bit of curveball. That's not only uranium, which 
I'm very bullish on the mid to long term, but also copper because you can't transmit electricity without oh, copper. Right. And the world continues to grow. 25% of the people that live on this planet still go to bed in the dark. Uh, a significant number of those are, are demanding electricity, particularly in, uh, in the Asia Pacific. So uh, I also remain a long-term, mid to long-term bull on the copper market. You know, that's interesting. I was taught that copper is a metal with a PhD, and it's been forecasting what's happening in global equity markets for a couple of years now. And, you know, everyone thinks copper is cheap right now, Mickey, but I remember trading 60 cents, 50 cents, okay? <laughs> so uh, uh, what are production costs for the copper mines? Are they underwater like the gold producers? And then I have one more question, uh, and it's energy related. And wouldn't the lower oil prices, which are a pretty big factor in a producing mine, have been a, a benefit for any type of miner because their production costs would drop with the uh, drop in energy? Well, you hit the nail on the head right there, Dale, because uh, the mining industry is just starting to factor in uh, the lower cost of energy, and energy is uh, one of the two largest inputs in any mine, and the, the other one would be labor costs. Um, but yeah, so uh, it, over the last two or three years, I've gone on record several times saying that, that $2.50 copper uh, looked like the bottom to me, uh, but that was in the paradigm of $90 oil. Um, so there is certainly a significant amount of copper that is not economic at $2.25 copper, which is where we sit at at the moment. So you will see that marginal uh, production come off. Uh, and it, it really is in the mining industry all about margin. The fact that the oil price is less than 50% of what it was, what, not much longer than a year ago, uh, would indicate that, that operating costs are going to come down. Uh, the other thing we have going for us, and, and, and not necessarily in, in the United States, is the stronger dollar. Uh, most of the copper mines, gold mines, uranium mines in the world are outside the United States, although we do have significant production. But they're operating on weaker currencies, so that's also a benefit to them. And if you do the math, uh, the dollar is up, what, uh, about 18%? Mm -hmm. uh, from a year ago, right. and you look at metals, and most of them are down not significantly more than that. Gold is probably down over that period of time uh, very little. So, so, so in, in that fact, uh, it's all about the strong dollar. Okay, so the correlation, of course, a stronger dollar puts pressure on commodity prices, especially with uh, what's happening in China and some of the disorder there since... Uh, they were the gorilla in the metals market from precious to non-precious, right? Well, that's true, and I want to tell you what the next gorilla in the market is, and that's India. Uh, India has 1.3 billion people now. Uh, China has 1.4. Uh, most Indians are still uh, live in rural villages without running water, without electricity, um, so I looked at for India to be the next booming country that will drive metal markets. Now, how long this correction or this cycle of bust is going to occur, that's very hard to predict. But, uh, uh, man, uh, well, we're in a deflationary period. Everyone's worried about the Fed raising rates. Uh, people were ready to take me to the uh, cuckoo nest. When I said it's possible that they won't ever tighten, that their next move will have to be another QE program. Uh, I wanted to ask you, with all this weakness and margins being pressured in across the board in the mining industry, uh, where the weak are on the verge of uh, failure, uh, mm -hmm. isn't this a time when the strong come in and look at perhaps at junior miners as takeover candidates? Well, that certainly is true, but first, the big mining companies, both in the gold realm and in the major 
international base metal and, and uh, uh, ferrous metal companies got to get their houses in order. So they are in the middle of more write downs now and tightening the belt and shedding marginal assets. What we have seen is we've seen the, the viable juniors uh, combine and merge and acquire in order to build mid tiers, and I think that is the paradigm we should be looking at. Okay, but so not, that could, that could be uh, like uh, McEwen Mining might do something like that. Yeah, that's a company that might. Or here, I'll give you one uh, in uran a couple in uranium space. Energy Fuels uh, took over Uraners in the in domestic U.S. uranium space. Now we have a merger in. Uh, in progress right now between Uranium Resources, Inc. and an Australian company with a very robustly economic project in Turkey called Anatolia Energy. So we've seen these small to mid-tier um, mergers, combinations, and, and I think that's what we should look, look at going forward. So are you uh, a believer that there's going to be more nuclear power plants built, uh, and where? Is it going to be in the U.S.? Are we going to go that way since, uh, you know, the environmentalists, et cetera, uh, can use the argument of all the supply that we have for energy based upon the fracking revolution? Why do we need to go nuclear? Well, I certainly think that uh, with the world uh, committed to reducing carbon use, that nuclear is the obvious choice. We're building five new nu nuclear plants in the United States right now, five under construction. Where are uh, they, uh, Mick? Uh, Georgia, South Carolina, and the fifth one escapes me. So, okay. Uh, yep, so those are in progress. They'll be online uh, certainly uh, in the next two to five years. Uh, the world that right now, there are 62 nuclear plants under construction, and, and it really is the ultimate green energy because it has essentially zero carbon impact. Uh, and and com uh, countries like China, India, Russia, uh, Saudi Arabia, even UAE, United Arab Emirates, Korea, uh, Turkey, Argentina are all uh, very committed with uh, uh, reactors under construction. Of course, most of that is driven by China, with about half of those uh, under construction uh, in China. But we're seeing a new nuclear power plant commission just about every month right now, someplace in the world. Are, are they safer uh, than, and people have uh, completely disregarded what happened at Fukushima? Well, I don't think we will ever completely disregard what happened at Fukushima, uh, but we ha we need to remember that no one died at Fukushima uh, because of radiation poisoning. Uh, the next generation of nuclear power plants are much safer, better designed. The real problem uh, was with not the earthquake, but with the tsunami at Fukushima, right. uh, it was greater than they thought could ever uh, occur there, and it flooded out all the secondary electrical supply, the diesel generators, so you couldn't get water to it. The new right. style reactors have the water above fed by gravity, so uh, we would hope that uh, an accident like that would never happen again. From your lips, Mickey. And uh, I wanted to ask you, you say you're an accumulator of physical gold uh, on weakness. Uh, you have a view of where the potential, I know it's, it's tough to call, but do you think that we have a low in in the gold? Uh, I, there's, uh, we either bottomed or I could make a case for 980, even 880 before the cycle ends. And why your bullishness in gold? Is it because of fiat currencies and the race to the base and you just feel more confident in uh, the gold market? And it has been a pretty deep correction about halfway back from the 2000 low of 200 to the 2011 high over 19. So uh, why don't you give us your view on gold? And while I uh, bring that up, uh, the gold silver ratio uh, doesn't silver have more positive supply fundamentals than the gold does? 
Well, to me, gold is money. It's the only money. Silver acts uh, in times of financial distress, uh, partly as a precious metal. Certainly, the gold-silver ratio, when it gets above 75, I look at it as out of whack, so that would give me a buying signal on physical silver. Right. Um, and, and your idea about fiat currency, I think exactly the same way. Uh, so for me, gold is not an investment. It's not a speculation. I'm a hoarder of gold, so uh, any time that it, that it shows weakness becomes a buying opportunity for me. And uh, I'm one of these people who think, uh, in my case, uh, about 20% of my net wealth should be in gold. Uh, because if uh, I don't use it in my lifetime, uh, the people that I will it to, will it will make them rich. Uh, they will never be poor uh, in their lifetime. So that whole thing. Uh, so are you, in, as, are you yeah, into, uh, this is just a correction, and uh, a lot of the long-term bulls are talking things like 3500 5000 an ounce down the road? Well, I'm not one of those people when it was pushing 1900 I I was loudly proclaiming that a correction was needed. It got way ahead of itself. Uh, I have several bets out there it would never reach 2,000 in this run up. So uh, I, I drink uh, uh, some nice bottles of wine on your glass. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, it's, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not what you would call a gold bug. Uh, I generally have bullish views on gold. Uh, but you're more uh, bullish copper, I could tell, and the energy metals. Yeah, I mean, I'm more bullish uranium right now because I see, uh, as a contrarian, I see opportunities for uh, to buy equ some equities. Um, but I'm a long-term bull uh, on copper. Uh, you know, uh, the one thing that continues to grow in the world is the demand for electricity. And so that's why I refer to both uranium and, which obviously is an energy metal, but also copper, because you need copper to transmit electricity. Don't you need silver for something, too, that can't be replaced by another metal? I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah silver has many industrial uses. In fact, it's more, in my opinion, an industrial metal versus a precious metal. But there are great hordes of silver uh, sitting around that when the price goes high, those flood the market. So the, to me, the supply-demand uh, fundamentals of silver have never really been compelling. Uh, it's what I would call a bipolar metal. So, okay. uh, and so I would rather, if I'm going to buy fresh, physical precious metals, uh, gold and, you know, over the last year or so, I've been buying platinum because it is undervalued historically with right. respect to gold. Right, and uh, it's industrial use for uh, catalytic converters? That's true, uh, although it is much less uh, important now than it used to be. It's used mainly in, in diesel engines now. Okay. Uh, and and you, you may have noticed that the price of palladium has gone down significantly. Yes. In, uh, uh, but it, was, uh, it remained high versus the other precious metals for quite some time because uh, that issue's uh, more industrially in, uh, in gasoline motors. So the demand for uh, automobiles in the U.S. and China drove that for quite some time. Okay, and uh, uh, any other views on uh, what's happening in the global economy here since you're, uh, you, you talk about copper, uh, do you think that we have a hard landing coming in China and that's going to be really the main depressant factor and that copper doesn't turn until China gets its house in order? Uh, certainly growth is slowed in China. Uh, soft landing, hard landing, uh, I'll leave that to some of the, the people more schooled in macroeconomics. Okay. Um, but, uh, yeah, copper uh, is... Um, as once again reaching the marginal cost of production, I would hope the bottom is is in. But you know, this is these are speculative markets traded uh, mainly in paper markets, futures yes. and options worldwide. Right. So I'm not precluding the copper. It cannot go cannot go lower. But uh, you know, I tend to take a longer term view on these commodities and and. 
once again bullish in the mid to long term. You know, copper production worldwide grows uh, three and a half to four percent a year and has since 1900, and that's totally driven by the demand for electricity. Okay, I want to wrap it with what you just brought up about the paper market. You know, there's been a lot of talk that the reason gold prices remain depressed is that, that it's being artificially depressed by short selling uh, because, uh, I don't know, either the U.S. doesn't have the gold that it says it does, and that's why they haven't been able to completely re-deliver to Germany that asked for their gold back a few years ago. And then there are guys like Jim Sinclair that talk about the emancipation of the gold price by uh, their catch and carry exchange in Singapore. Do you think that they're, that the markets are being artificially depressed by manipulation, trying to keep it down because there's not enough physical to cover all the paper? Well, certainly uh, the gold market is manipulated. I'm not a conspiracy theorist, uh, you know. Uh, I don't always agree with the Gata guys or Sinclair on their uh, pounding the pavement and uh, right. their bully pulpit about manipulation. Here's my take. All all markets are manipulated. Amen, Mickey. Uh, uh, yeah, from the beginning of time and will never <laughs> change. Exactly. So our job is, as investors and speculators is to deal with a paradigm we are given and learn to make money in manipulated markets. And there's always something to be long on. I'm not a short guy. I, I'm always long on something. And, and so look at it that way and learn how to make money with given that paradigm. Mickey, what a great discussion on the mining industry, metals, uh, 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 the type of metals that people probably aren't even thinking of that... Uh, uh, generate power uh, your talk about India it was a great discussion I want to thank you for your time and I'll leave you with what I learned when I was in the bullion business in the 70s don't wait to buy gold buy gold and wait I could not uh, say that any better Dale. thank right. you thank very much it's my pleasure it was a great interview thank you so much for your time Mickey thank you Dale all right bye bye nice meeting you Nice to meet you. Mickey Fulp at Mercenary Geo. Looks like the Euro's starting to pop a little bit here. So I know everyone in here that trades currencies has an interest in the metals. Uh, I think